Hey everyone, in today's video I'll be going over how to import airfoil cross sections into Creo. The goal of this video is to get you from this to this in the least complicated way possible. Um, if you're watching this video, I'm sure you know exactly what you're looking for, um, but just a little bit of background on this problem. Um, airfoils are defined using X and Y coordinates. Um, so this line here, the spline, is defined from all these x, y coordinates that are right here. So given an x point, the line will be at a specific y coordinate. Um, so in CAD programs, you totally can, if you really want to waste your time, <laughs> go through here and plot every single point and then connect a spline through all of that. Uh, that's what I used to do when I was a student. It was always just a huge pain. I was like, there has to be a better way. Um, so I watched a few other videos. There's some ways you can do it using Microsoft Word. Um, I thought that was almost just as tedious. Um, so eventually I kind of wrote a MATLAB script that was able to convert all these points into a file that Creo could read and import it that way. Uh, but I realized that not everyone has access to MATLAB, so I came up with a way in Microsoft Excel. Um, you could probably do something similar using Google Sheets or any other spreadsheet program, um, and it should get you to the same end result. So I'm just on airfoiltools.com. Uh, got a lot of different airfoils here. Um, got the NACA 0018 up, or another classic airfoil is the Clark Y. Um, so whatever airfoil you want, whatever purpose you're looking for, I know they have some tools on this website also for creating airfoils. Um, so whatever you decide to do, I want you to be able to get this file into Creo looking like a wing um, really quickly. So no matter what airfoil you decide to use, there should be a link somewhere for a DAP file, which should include all these coordinates. Um, the Clark Y that I just talked about is pretty simple, um, classic airfoil. The coordinate file um, through the process I'm about to talk about is basically as easy as it gets. So I'm going to go through using the NACA 0018 um, since there's a couple more steps involved with this one. So it should cover more of the issues that any of you guys have. So I'm going to go here, click on the DAP file, as I said. These are all the coordinates that you need to define the airfoil. So I'm just gonna go save that. Um, I've got these other files here, but I'll just add another one too. Um, so you wanna save it as a text file, save. So once you have your file downloaded, you're gonna wanna go into Excel here um, and then open that file that you just downloaded. So I'll go find that here quick. Uh, it's not an Excel file, it should be a text or dat, um, something like that. I guess it popped up as dot dat dot text, but we'll roll with it. Um, hit open, and because it's not an Excel file, it'll ask you some questions about how you want to import this file. So for what we want to do, we're going to hit fixed with, hit next, and then... Uh, make sure that this line here is in between the two columns. This will help it break apart the XY data so that you can process it. Uh, you know, hit next, just leave it at general, hit finish, and then it should pop up looking something like this. So I'll go over the data quick here. So you can see it starts at one, goes to zero, and then ends at one again. That's that's because it's talking about both of the splines. So therefore it's defined as a top spline and a bottom spline. And then the coordinate system goes from zero out to one. So later on in the 3D modeling program that you're using, uh, you can scale that chord from one to whatever dimension you want. But in this process, you want to keep it at one so that you can scale it easier later on. So back to Excel here, um, like I just said, there's a top spline and a bottom spline, but sometimes the coordinates are overlapping here at this zero. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is take this bottom spline part, and I know that it's the bottom spline because there's these negative 
Y coordinates here. Take those, copy those over there somewhere, and then delete everything after zero. One thing that's kind of funky in Creo is it wants the data going from zero out to one. Uh, so this top spline here, we're going to have to flip around. So let's do that. So you'll select all those data points, go over to the data column, try that. Um, just try whichever one you need so that you can get it flipped out to go from zero to one. Another thing that we'll have to do is if there's any header information that came with your text file, you'll want to delete that. Um, and then in this top row here, you'll have to make X, Y, and then even though you only need X, Y data for this, uh, Creo still needs a Z coordinate. So you add that in there. And then we'll have to add in a column of zeros as well. So do that quickly. Click, click and drag. All the way down. And now we have both sets of data that we need. And now we can start making the necessary files that Creo will read in. So I'll just go to my file explorer here. Go to the folder I'm working in. And then you'll need to create two new text documents. So I'll just call them ACA 0018. Oh. Uh, you'll want one for the top and the bottom spline. So just copy those. Just call them top and bot. And then another thing with Creo, it won't read in a .txt file. You'll have to rename it to be a .pts file. Uh, I click yes. Do the same for both of them. So I'll open up the top one first. This should just be an empty text file. And then we'll go, you want to copy, select the top, copy. Paste that in there, hit save. Now the top file is good, close out of that one. Open up the bottom one. Select the bottom spline. Go back to your file, save, good to go. Now at this point we have both the files we need to import into Creo. So let's go do that. In Creo now, and I'll just make a new wing here for demonstration. Make a new part, okay. Uh, then we'll need to make a sketch. I don't believe it matters what plane you're going on, so we'll just pick this one, XY plane. Click Sketch, go to your sketch view with that icon. And one very important step that you'll need for this is you need to add in a coordinate system. So go up here. And in a coordinate system, you can put it wherever you want, but I like to just put it at the origin. Finish that, and then we'll add in a point somewhere off to the right. And to match our files, we'll want to place this at one unit away from the origin so that the spline can work properly. Uh, if you changed or scaled your files any dimension other than one, then you'll need to make that number this dimension. So then we'll go in and add in a couple splines, make one on the top, can be basically whatever you want, just need to start at the zero and then end at the back there. So now we have two splines, obviously they do not look like they're supposed to, so to fit them to the airfoil that we want to import, we'll click on the spline, Click Modify, and then we'll go over here to hit File. It'll ask us to pick a coordinate system, and then we'll go over here to Open and find our file. So this was the top spline, so I'll want to import the top one. Click Yes, and now that shows the spline of the airfoil that we're trying to import. Click OK, do the same thing for the bottom. Now we can see we've got our top and bottom splines, got our 0018 airfoil there, you can click OK. And now 
you can do whatever you need to do with that uh, cross section there. I'm just going to extrude that out to make a wing quick. And there you have it. You got your airfoil imported. If you have any questions about this process, feel free to leave any comments. Um, I'd be happy to help. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content. Thank you.